In this episode of Mind Pump, the world's number one fitness, health, and entertainment podcast, uh, we have a lot of fun. We answer fitness and health questions that are asked by our audience and by listeners. But the way we open the episode is with an introductory portion where we talk about you know current events. We talk about what's happening in our own lives. We mention our sponsors. So I'm going to give you a rundown of today's episode. We open up by talking about uh, Adam's birthday and Katrina's birthday. They yeah, both had a nice whammy. celebration this weekend. They don't remember what happened, but it sounds like it was a fun time. <laughs> then yeah. then uh, Justin talked about, I guess there's this drug uh, floating around college campuses called Vigor. Yeah. Better than Adderall. What I'm interested. Weird. Then I uh, give a little update on our lack of sleep at home because of baby Aurelius, you little shit. Uh, then we talk about Baby Yoda, the controversy around Baby Yoda. Cancel culture is going after mm. the best thing that happened in 2020. What won't they come after? You guys need to relax. Uh, then I talk about the COVID vaccine results from Moderna. It's a competing vaccine uh, to the Pfizer one. This one seems to have more effectiveness. Let's see what happens. Then we talk about our PRX shipping snafu. Uh, they were sending it to the wrong house. Luckily, Justin got on the phone, got them to... Swing around. So we're about to get a bunch of new equipment from PRX. Ooh, new toys. Now, PRX makes the best home gym equipment. Okay, right now, gyms are closing down again. Uh, maybe you're too scared to go to the gym. Work out at home. Here's the problem. Not a lot of space at home. Well, here's how PRX solves that. All their equipment is sturdy, commercial grade, but folds into the wall. So you get a squat rack that literally folds into the wall and has like 12 inches uh, off the wall. That's it. Um, and then you pull it out, and now yeah. you get a full squat Turns rack. Turns into a decoration. And lots and lots of other equipment. And because you listen to Mind Pump, you actually get a hookup. Go to prxperformance.com forward slash Mind Pump and get your Mind Pump discount. Uh, then we talk about our kids being on computers all day because, you know, school's not open yet. Something um, got to do. And uh, luckily, they're all wearing their blue light blocking glasses. Uh, blue light from your computer screen can hurt your eyes, cause headaches, and if you do it at night, can prevent you from getting good sleep. So try blue light blocking glasses. Our favorite company is Felix Gray. They look good, and they don't change the color of everything around you. The The lenses are clear. They're not red or orange. Um, go check them out. Go to felixgrayglasses.com. That's F-E-L-I-X-G-R-A-Y glasses.com forward slash mind pump, and you'll get free shipping, returns, and exchanges. Then we got into the fitness questions. Here's the first one. This person wants to know how exercise tempo affects aesthetics. The next question, this person wants to know the difference between Smith machines and barbell or free weight barbell exercises. What are the pros and cons? The next question, this person says, look, I'm bulking, trying to gain weight. I'm lifting weights three days a week. Should I be in a calorie surplus every single day or just on the days I work out? And the final question, this person wants help with mobility and correctional exercise. So using our resources, uh, we provide some information on how you can do that. So if this is something you're interested in, listen to that part of the episode. We'll help direct you on what you need to watch and do to improve your individual mobility. Also, uh, this month is a holiday month. Uh, we're moving into the holiday season. So we've put together a massive discount bundle. It's our Holiday Ultimate At-Home Bundle. So what we've done is taken our most popular at-home workout programs and discounted them tremendously. So the first program is MAPS Anywhere. So all you need for this program are resistance bands and a broomstick and your body, and you can train your entire body with this workout program. It's a couple months long, so it's all planned out for you. It comes with videos and demos. Very, very effective. The next program... Uh, that's very popular for home workouts, is MAPS Suspension. In this program, you just use suspension trainers and your body weight, and you train your entire body. doesn't matter if you're beginner or even extremely advanced. With our program, you can modify the exercises to make them easy or make them very, very difficult. Uh, again, a full-body program coming with instructional videos and blueprints. And then finally, we threw in MAPS Hit. This is high-intensity interval training program. So this is a 15 to 25 minute super high calorie burning workout program. And all you need for this one are a pair of dumbbells. That's it. A pair of dumbbells and you can do this whole program at home. All three programs norm normally retail for $291, but right now we've put them all together for this ultimate at home bundle for $99.99. So you just pay that once and you get all three full access for life. $99.99, and you get a 30-day money-back guarantee. Here's how you sign up. 
Go to mapsnovember.com. That's the word maps, M-A-P-S, november.com. I saw the sign. And it opened up my eyes. Wow. Did you guys like, did you guys like, what were they called? Ace of Base. Yes. Oh, yeah. They were good. No. They, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they were. I mean, you know, like I caught myself bobbing my head every now and then. Yeah. yeah. Come on, Couldn't dude. help it. Dee, Couldn't help dee, it. Dee, dee, dee. I saw the sign. They were, they were good. That's yeah. a little, uh, you threw a little, um, uh, I, I divided it a little bit. Yeah, yeah. it sounded a little veteranish there for a second. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Dude, I, can I tell you guys how much I hate YouTube commenters? Do you, oh, you pay attention? Never. What did what got posted recently? Stupid. Nothing. So it's our. So you know we 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 record the podcast on YouTube. By the way, you can watch our podcast on YouTube too. So if you I haven't even, I, I recommend I, it. But I warn you, we got faces for podcasts. Anyway, <laughs> uh, I go on there and I'm just looking at comments because I haven't visited in a while. Uh-huh. And so, <laughs> some asshole puts. He goes, yeah, I've been listening to these guys for a long time. You, you'd think they were Jack, but they're not. <laughs> <laughs> Ouch. I was like, wow, like dude. I was going for the jugular. Wow, dude. Yeah. I was like, my feelings are hurt for a second. These yeah. are fitness guys? Yeah. I don't know, man. It was, it's been, I want to say it's been like a good year or two since I've been on there. I stay off of there, dude. Yeah. It's, yeah, just, it's terrible for the ego. Oh, no, it's horrible. Yeah. I, I, t- I told you guys about when my daughter, you know, she had the bad comments on uh, Roblox or whatever. Yeah. Oh, my God. I went on there to show her, like, hey, Hey, honey, you want to see what people say about me? <laughs> I found one comment where that's one, a good move. One guy goes, "Bad chest" or yeah. something like that. So like, what are you doing, dude? Bad chest, that's terrible arms. Up. Yeah, it's yeah. messed up. Well, and we wonder why you have these insecure kids that you know post constantly of their you know naked, half naked photos, and when they're in their best shape of their lives, and that's all you see. Like, of course, dude. Oh, because that it's just like a vicious cycle. Man. Oh, you go on there and you feel terrible after terrible. fifteen hey, minutes. Hey, it's your birthday. It is. Damn. Today is your birthday. So I you're mean, what? How, are you 39 now? 39. Oh, man. my God. One, one more year. Yeah, one year, man. You're, it's your last year in your 30s. <clears throat> How yeah. do you feel? Uh, I feel like I'm definitely almost 40. Really? Hmm. Yeah. I have to, you know, this the last, um, I don't know, probably three, four years that I, I feel like I felt my age. Like, I definitely feel older than what I did before. Mm. You know, like, last. so last night, so we were supposed to meet this morning and work out together at eight o'clock. This yeah, morning. you guys. Are yeah, somebody showed up. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. We, there, there was a lot of talk <clears throat> last week about you know what we haven't trained together in a long time. Yeah, I have a whole different perspective. I could tell too, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> this whole story. Okay, let's hear your perspective. I learned my lesson with you guys. Uh-huh. It's you, you guys on Friday. Hey, let's meet up on uh, let's meet up at work like an hour early and lift weights. It was like yeah, and I so so this weekend I'm like, should I? show up to work early and work out i'm like they're not gonna show up <laughs> sure enough nobody showed i worked out at home this morning. well okay back not up. nobody uh, yeah somebody showed yeah, up yeah justin showed up did late. you actually show up yeah late, late, 8 45 full workout <laughs> <laughs> no, you yeah. what time did you show up no i was here at like 8 10 well first oh, okay, okay. Like first of all late. it was uh, it, there's a lot of conversation around this on friday okay and everybody seemed pretty excited even Doug seemed like you might get in on it, all right? Everybody right. was like, "Yeah, there was yeah. a lot of synergy." Yeah, there was a lot of like, "Yeah, let's do that. Let's let's <laughs> let's let's you know, let's beat these holidays, right? Let's get together yeah. early in the morning, train together, let's get ahead of it." Right, right. So there was a lot of that going on on Friday. So I'm like, "Okay, I'm cool with that." Knowing that this is my birthday, Katrina and I's birthday weekend. Yeah, I want to hear about that by the way. Right, yeah, yeah. and I'm like, "Okay, there. yeah, let's do that." So I sent a text message last night. Yeah, last night. Yeah. Last night I sent a text message like, "Hey, who's on for eight o'clock tomorrow morning?" And no, I got crickets except for Justin. And Justin's answer wasn't like, "Yeah, let's do this." It was, "Sure, <laughs> sure, <laughs> which, guy. Which, sure, yeah, I'll be there." <laughs> sure, sure says to me, "Okay, if everybody else is doing it, I'm in." Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Well, like, and it's, the, it's confirming, it's <laughs> right? Uh, and so, what more do you want from even me? though I got a just a sure, I was still planning on coming up this morning but last night i had red velvet cake and this gets back to your first question of like <laughs> feeling my age somewhere between uh you know early years of life to i don't know 30 something i no longer could eat cake like i used to be able to eat mm. cake you know i could i could eat a whole cake dude i could i could smash a whole cake and be completely fine the next day no problem and now, not only can I not have a full cake, I I can't have more than, and I think it's, I think if I did the measurement right, it's like uh, 
I got two inches, like an inch and a half to two inch slice is all I'm allowed. Any uh, why? What happens? Because well, you go above that, and I'm, I'm fucked. This is the saddest story I've ever heard. <laughs> <laughs> wow! If I have, I I can have like I can have it in moderation, right? I can have like little a little bite or a small little sliver. But if I have like a man slice, yeah, man slice means I'm fucked up for the rest of the night. Just and last, pooping. Yeah, and last night. I went in. I had a man slice. Not only did I have a man slice, I sat down and I watched. Full knowing that you were going to. Knowing, yeah. Just, I just ch- said, you know what? Fuck it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be on the toilet later tonight. Who cares? And I had a man slice. I watched Mandalorian. I watched The Right Stuff. Uh, both those episodes were, were in my queue. Uh, how long does it take to hit you? Uh, about two hours, I would say. That fast? Yeah, two oh, hours. So two hours. Two boom. hours, the first one is like, and, and and you know what? This is probably what happened to me, right? So I go to the bathroom and I was like, that wasn't so bad. <laughs> no, no, yeah. no, that's the, so that's I, the pre-quake. Yeah, yeah, so, <laughs> so I go back for a second slice, right? No, Oh, no. you idiot. Yeah, yeah. That's like so, the guy who oh, eats the uh, the edible. It's like, yeah. Yeah, yeah I don't really feel it. I don't feel it. Give me a double. Do so, and, so for me, and I don't know if anybody else can relate to this, but I know like would like if i have to shit at three o'clock in the morning if a shit wakes it's me never up never good yeah that's no there's y- no you're in for a day there, and, healthy shits don't wake you right up exactly sleep. and by the way anybody else who does this and thinks that's normal that's not a normal like thing you no. shouldn't have to get up at three <laughs> o'clock in the morning no, to, no, to, to no. Take a shit. <laughs> that means your body has decided yeah that shitting is more important than sleeping yeah. at yeah, that yes, moment exactly something bad evacuate exactly. Exactly. something bad so happened. yeah you know that well, i just picture adam with his like his velvet cake you know and he's just like sitting there with the yeah his little birthday hat on right <laughs> like in a robe, and, yeah. I yeah. deserve this. Yeah. Just, yeah. I'm, this I'm gonna pay for time. it, but I don't care. Yeah. I'm just eating it all up. Yeah. So yeah, this morning when uh, you know I'm uh, up, I was up plenty early to get here to less, but I'm like, oh, oh. My stomach's bothering me. Yeah. And then you guys celebrated uh, Katrina's birthday too. Yeah. So Katrina, now she turned forty. She turned forty. We're one day apart, and she tells she me, looks way younger than you. I don't want to yeah. make you feel bad. <laughs> It's, but that's true. We need to buy you points. <laughs> Way younger yeah. than you do. I don't know about that. We went to uh, we went to so uh, we're heading out to our like one of our favorite spots. Can't right? take the assist, can you? Know, right? <laughs> you that's perfect, point. Sal. He yeah. didn't even go. With that's that. okay. Keep going. It's fine. She listens, but it's fine. <laughs> so what happens? So, Why am I wrong? <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. I remember. I should just end this story right now. Actually. <laughs> <laughs> you have to tell it now. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we went to uh, you know what's the what's the wine you know beverage place that's like fucking popular over here? Bevmo? Like, no, not the other one. Seven Eleven? No, <laughs> Jesus guy. <laughs> yeah. Wine and more or something? Yeah, like that? Yeah, it's that one. Whatever. It's, it's that big. <laughs> the wine no knows. Any the alcoholic of the group spoke up. Yeah. Thank yeah. you, Doug. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, so we go in there, and uh, Katrina's like, I so Katrina is you know it's her fortieth. That's what we're celebrating first. We're not really celebrating mine. We're celebrating her birthday. We're going out to Sanctuary, our our favorite spot that we always go to, um, because it was supposed to be this massive party in Cabo, and that got all canceled because of COVID. So we're going out to Sanctuary. We're going to do our normal thing out there where we, we we swing by, we pick up, we go to pick up a bottle of Dom, and we go in the the uh, the wine place or whatever. And uh, I don't have my wallet on me, so she's picking it up. And but we're both in the store. We got our masks on, and we're waiting in line. And this lady, this lady with like this this the eighties hairspray. Yes, she had mm. a, uh, like a shield, like a helmet. Yeah, like a, a helmet oh, yeah. shield. Hair thing. bear. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> hair, bear. hair bear. Remember that? Yeah, yeah. That's what it looked yeah. like, right? So we get we get in line, and I'm like standing off to the side. I'm not even like right in the the checkout, right? I'm waiting for her to get it. And the lady's like, "I'm going to need to see both your IDs." And Katrina pulls her out right away. I was like, "Oh, I don't, I didn't bring my wallet in." She's like, "Well, then I can't sell this to you." Mm. And I'm like, "Are you serious right now?" And she's like, "Yeah, no, you both need to have your ID. In fact, you shouldn't even be in the store if you don't have your ID." And so I like pull my mask down. I take my hat <laughs> off. And I'm like, "Yeah, I don't have my ID." And I'm like, like trying to be like playful about yeah. it. Like, you know, it's okay. Look, like, at, the look bo- at my face. Yeah, look at the bold yeah. head. Look yeah. at the gray hairs yeah. in my beard. <laughs> like, see what's happening? Probably older than 21, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, and she's like, was literally being resistant about it still. And I'm like, are you really going to make me leave? And I've got 1981 tattooed on my arm. I've got gray in my beard. I'm balding. I was like, <laughs> I really need to go out to just, and my wife is buying the fucking champagne. So I need to show you my great pubes. She finally let it go, but it was like, I got this like stern talking to about coming in the store without an idea. Oh. So, yeah. So it was, anyways, so we get our, our champagne and then a client of mine uh, gets us a bottle of Krug. And then, uh, her, and then I'm like, okay, we got two bottles of champagne. That's that's a lot already for the two of us. 
Then we stopped by her mom's on our way out before we were leaving Max, right? This is, by the way, too, this is the first time that we've ever left Max overnight. So, so we, this is the first since since Max was born. Yes. First time away for a whole night. Right. Oh, this so it just get, screams freedom. Yeah, you guys are going to fuck up. So, yeah, this has never, never happened yet. So, and <clears throat> so then we swing by her mom's. Her mom buys us a bottle of Moet. So we've got three bottles of champagne. And then Damn. and then Katrina tells me, on our way out there, she's like, I, I want to try shrooms. Oh, no. And I'm oh, like, no. are you serious right now? Like, you want to do that also on top of all this? And she's like, yeah, I mean. I'm, I'm glad you're telling me now and not before because you know my paranoid ass. Is <laughs> oh, yeah. I know. No! I know yeah. better than to tell you because then you would tell me all the things I can't do, right? So anyways, we go out there. And it's like, I don't know, 4.30 or so, and we start to uh, have the champagne, and we have, like, cheese crackers and all that stuff, and watch the sunset. And, man, with that first bottle just goes down so smooth, and then the second bottle before you know it. And here's the kicker of all this. So, and I, if you watch my stories, you saw I did a little video of, the like, us getting started, the three bottles of champagne, and then the I brought the Z-Biotics. And so in the video, I'm like, oh, before we take it, let's take a video of the Z-Biotics, right? So we do the video of the Z-Biotics real quick, and then I rip mine off, and, and then she doesn't open hers. And I'm like, are you going to take that? And she's like, come on, honey. She's like, we've been together for 10 years. Have you ever seen me have a problem with alcohol? Oh, famous last words. Ooh, right. That was a challenge. Yeah, you're challenging the yeah, alcohol right. gods. Yeah. Yeah. And so I go, no, you should take it. And she's like, and she just looks at me, and she's like, have you ever? I've never seen, so by the way, I've never seen Katrina throw up. She's never thrown up in, in 10 years that we've been together. She's got the, she has the gene in her family, if I haven't already told that on the show mm -hmm. before. Right? Yeah, you have. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's like runs in her blood. She could have like a, a bottle of Jack, get up the next morning at 5 o'clock and get a workout in like it's no thing. It's like, uh, you remember in Indiana Jones uh, where he, he meets up with that girl that was like taking shots and like drinking everybody under the table? That's what I picture oh, Katrina. Her, she is 100% like that, and I can't hang at all. Like I just, it's why I, a lot of times I got to leave the family events like early because it's just like they just keep going and going and going and going all night long. And like I have a few drinks and I get sick. So today's not even a commercial for Z-Biotic, but I'm telling you guys right now, I am so fucking blown away every time I, I use this stuff because this is, I have no business having this much to drink. I mean, three bottles of, one bottle of champagne polished off has already like got me good. Two bottles is like, okay, now I'm an asshole. Three is like, I'm asking for it. Oh, you, you used to get hangovers from one drink. Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I'm so sensitive to alcohol. So yeah, that stuff's weird for sure. So I had the Z-Biotic. She didn't have it. And oh man, she was bad, dude. Oh no. Oh yeah, she was bad. And then of course the, the shrooms hit at the same time. And it was just <laughs> no, like no. it was just like holding I'm their, dying. Yeah, holding their hair back. And she was like, and then I and then I was like Did I was, you guys at least have fun first? Yeah. Or did yeah. it just get sick? No, I mean we had like uh, you know, blackout fun for like two hours, you know. What I'm Hold saying? on, so, so how long was this party? I need to know the time. Okay, so it was like four thirty. I want to say is when when we uh, when we started it, and I can go back to double check, but it was right around. It was before sunset. I okay. think sunset's five thirty. Yeah, right? yeah. So we started about four thirty, and it was a wrap by about nine nine. <laughs> <laughs> You're wasting no time. Yeah, you know. <laughs> you know what's funny about this is that so Jessica and I went to Mexico with my cousins and friends, and they're all married with kids, and I have two kids, but they were older. This is before we had Aurelius. So it's just Jessica and I, and we're there, and it's we're just at a resort, and everybody's going hard as soon as they get there, shots and drinking, and I'm, and Jessica's looking at me like, why is everybody like, what's going? What's the race? Why is everybody going so hard? I'm like, yeah. honey, you don't understand. Yeah. I said they're all parents of small kids. Yeah. The second they go out the door, they're in a rush to get to just go crazy. Yeah. I said you just wait, you, and I know we're gonna, it's going to happen too. Rayleigh's going to be a year old or whatever. Leave them with mom. I, w I wasn't expecting sure. that. You know, I made this big joke about like, you know, who's going to cry first, Max or or K Katrina and stuff. And on it, to totally honest, like we didn't check in or nothing. Like I don't know if that makes us bad parents or what. But, <laughs> yeah. You know, like we, <laughs> yeah. there was no phone calling. There was no like it was. Yeah. She, he was with my sister, and my sister is like a godsend, man. I mean, she yeah. he's uh, and we she came in like she flew in like three days early because one of the things we wanted to make sure was that she was acclimated to his routine. So that it would be like a smooth transition, right? So there was no, and so we did that. So like the couple of days before, she was like, she was posting pictures of him. Yeah, she yeah. was getting, she was getting him ready for bed and reading to him and all, all the, all like the whole routine. So that when we left, 
it would just be hopefully this smooth transition. And the way we looked at it was, you know, my sister obviously would call me right away if there was any sort of issues. So we just said, okay. Well, How terrible. She calls you right when you're drunk. Oh, and, God. And, and I tripping. mean, looking back now, I think like, <laughs> oh, oh my God. God. Could you imagine that? Uh, or, where, you guys well, need to come back. Well, <laughs> so the funny part is, right, we only went, no. okay, so Sanctuary is only like 45 minutes to an hour from our house, right? And part of the reason why we made that decision is the first night of going away from Max was that, if anything happens, we can always just get in the car and come back. No, you can't. <laughs> yeah. No, you can't. And after this all happened, I think back, I go like, oh my God, like we may as well have been fucking halfway across the country because there's no way we would get oh. back from that whole situation. Yeah. But so. no, it's, you guys had a good time though. Yeah. Before was, all that. Yeah, it was a, it was a, it was Dude, a, you had, it's the, the bet, I swear, when you finally get that break, it's like you have the vacation sex, you have the, yeah. the connecting, the party. Uh, and you only need to do that every once every six months or so. So yeah. none of those six months or so you'll do that again. And it's a big marker too. I mean, you had a lot of factors going into that. You know? Yeah, and that's why I was okay with like wow and out like that. I mean, this is obviously not. I mean, I see Doug looking at me over here when I'm talking about shrooms and alcohol and everything like that. He's just great. He's talking about uh, shiitake mushrooms. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. Doug. yeah, yeah, right, Doug. So that's what we were doing. <laughs> yeah, so he was in Oregon. Uh, so I always, it's see, all good. I always yeah. see the da the dad look coming right, when, right. I, when I get that. But it's it like, hey, you know what? It fucking Katrina doesn't ever ever ask for any of that stuff and doesn't ever want to go hard like that so i thought she's 40 she could do whatever the fuck she wants you know? so, <laughs> that's yeah. awesome though yeah yeah so we got down it was oh good, good deal yeah, man i'm good, glad you guys yeah, did that but good. the boy was okay yeah he did really really good i was good. i was really happy to hear that which because that was the other thing too we talked about it before like her and i are like please god please be good please be good because my sister is probably going to be one of the go-to people that if we do this we'll take care of him right that's probably one of the number one people that we trust with him while we're not and so katrina and i were talking about man what if he has like a night like the other night where he was, wasn't feeling well and he's this and that? Like, my sister's got to be up all night. She changes her mind. Yeah, then she's never going to want to do it again. It's like that <laughs> oh, one time man. she did it yeah. and then she's never going to ruin the whole flow. Yeah, so we we're like praying, please be good. And she right. she did the next morning. She's like, oh my God, this kid is unbelievable. Like, how fun and easy he is. I'm like, oh, yes. Oh, it's yeah. perfect. Good boy, son. Yeah. That's the way to end it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So dude, get <laughs> dude, so speaking of drugs, since this is part of the conversation, uh, have you heard of this new drug, Vigor? Vigor? Yeah. No. Okay, so it's like, apparently this is like sweeping college campuses, this and that. It's supposed to be like even more powerful than Adderall. What? Yeah, like it's it's some kind of like limitless type drug, and no. so so far, yeah, and this is, all the up. claims are that like so far they haven't found a lot of um, you know problems with with people having side effects and things like that, and I'm just like, wait a minute, you know, I'm sure it's like long term from now where we'll see again uh, lots of things. Like it's we've an seen from it's an herbal herbal supplement. It's a supplement. It's not even a drug. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh it, wow. I think well, from what I found, so I'm looking it up online, and it says it's confirmed that it contains. Sildenafil, which is uh, the active ingredient in Viagra. Okay. Yeah. So so <laughs> it's part of that. So that's why well, I'm so uh, is excited. It, is it a limitless, like for your brain, or limitless for? This is like, what your, they were touting on the wiener. article. Which one is it for? <laughs> I got to see. Maybe I'm reading the wrong thing. I would love to see that. Yeah. yeah I know. I was just curious about that. If you heard of it? Stronger than Adderall's. What is it? Crystal meth? Yes. Yeah, I was going <laughs> to gonna say that's one step away. Yeah, from I don't know that. if it's like more hyper focus or or what that is. I don't know that necessarily it gives you like all this energy or anything. Oh, these kids in college. I yeah, swear. I know they're trying it all for us. They're so. all crazy. We'll yeah, Jessica had a rough night last night. The boy was just not. He was just not. Yeah, that's the one I read, Doug. That says right. it has Viagra in it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she was just. It, my son was not letting her nap or sleep at all. Oh yeah, at all. So I, you know, to it. So she goes into his room in the middle of the night to, to like try to feed him and try to, you know, allow me to sleep because I have to work the next day. 2 a.m. she comes in. She's like, uh, we need to switch rooms. And I can tell in her voice that she's like ready to, she's fried. Yeah. So I'm like, of course, honey, let me go in the other room. I'll take the other whatever. She woke up this morning and she had like a 15-minute nap or whatever. She's like, I'm feeling really emotional. I'm like, you have no sleep, honey. Yeah. So this is the beginning of the- So are you, okay, the, in the storm. But she's killing, I mean, she's doing amazing. She's managing the whole thing, but- that sleep deprivation is a mother. So I'm, I'm yep. curious, you're the other room. Uh, what's the bed setup look like for you? So we have uh, the the we have Aurelius has his crib. He's not in there yet, obviously, because yeah. right now he's next to us in our room right. usually. But then there's a uh, like a fold out bed that you can sleep in. So, so. this is what will be interesting for me with you because uh, this was kind of like a, we had like the the you know the hand me down you know our spare bedroom was like awful for the, forever. 
And uh, when I began sleeping in there <laughs> more and more nights, then you you found me about, I don't know, I want to say it was about a month or so in of, of having nights just like you just explained. Mm-hmm. And then I was online like searching for nice beds. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so now our bedroom has like all the top of the line sheets and down comforter and a new mattress because I was like, okay, the first couple nights, you know, it was because it's on a whim and it's last minute like that. It's like, oh, whatever. I'll, exactly. But yeah, because I had one. One sheet. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm curious how long it'll be like a okay bed before you finally just yeah, go like, dude. Uh, okay, I'm investing. Yeah, I think nice. I'm going to have to change that. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you mentioned Mandalorian. Did you guys see the controversy? Which I... Uh, what's wrong with people? What is what's happening? Yeah, it's so this, culture, it, dude. This, it's Baby Yoda. It's a are we getting trolled? Though? Are we getting trolled? Though? That's what I think. I, I hope it has so. to be. I really hope so. So, so for people who don't know, Baby Yoda in the episode he eats. They're 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 offering passage to this like frog lady who has her eggs in this container yes. of liquid. And anytime Baby Yoda gets next to it, he sneaks and eats a couple of them, yeah. which is funny, hilarious. My yeah. kids and I were dying because he's right. this little like cute. You know, predator. You know, predator. Eating. Yeah, he eats little things. He's eat- well, you remember Yoda in the uh, oh, Star yeah. Wars original one, right? Didn't yeah, he eat- yeah, he eats little frogs and all kinds of little things yeah. all the time. Yeah, yeah it's so like, uh, come on. So what was the the, the controversy? There? They said it was misogynistic because <laughs> something to deal with that. This <laughs> he's not even human. I it's know the patriarchy. It was that this was like a a woman trying to transfer and to no, it was a have, frog. It was Continue a, a frog lady. <laughs> yeah. It was a frog lady okay. who was trying to to have or you know bring her egg. Over to a frog man so he can she, he can fertilize it and they can have babies and keep their species going. Oh, and because Baby Yoda was eating them, it was like this. I anyway. thought it was hilarious. Wow, I, I mean, I, a lot of, sometimes I feel like we're just getting that's a lot of projection that that's involved in. You that. might be right. Train it, of thought. It, it so, might be one tweet yeah, from some more. It was a couple of a tweet, a couple of people because I saw the uh, you know who did a, a little thing on it was the one minute guy from Barcelona. I saw did a whole thing on it and he shared a, a you know there was a handful of tweets from people that did it, but. You know, it's funny how we we're, where we're at now. Like we're in we're in this time now where if you at all have a following, right? So if you have a blue check and you've got tens of thousands or millions of followers, and you say something stupid, it becomes it's news now. Mm. It's automatic. Like something like back in the day, I remember. Do you guys remember this transition too? I remember sitting in the living room with Katrina and going like, "Oh my God, the news is reporting tweets." Yeah. yeah. And I thought that was the most ridiculous thing I had ever heard or seen. And that's the norm now. It is I know. ridiculous. I know. I mean, it's or, like- or, or even if you're just a normal person and you put out a tweet and then people <laughs> want to use your tweet... Yeah, to politicize it. Yeah, like, oh, this is what people are thinking. Right. No, it's what a few idiots are so thinking. some moron just said. Yeah, there's always going to be idiots out there. It just right. makes it look like, so well, you're, you're probably right. Yeah. That's what I mean. Like, now, now, like, some- Accusations of genocide. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> He's a creature. Yeah. It's hilarious. <laughs> He's a puppet. Yeah. yeah. But He's you know, puppet, all, it, all it takes is one idiot that has a million followers it's on just Twitter, funny. and they put it out there, and it makes news. You know what? Here, I'm going to speak to the few idiots uh. that actually thought that. If you want- Watch the Mandalorian. They're killing people left and right. Yeah, nobody Where's cares. Where's all the outrage for that? It's all there's yeah. dead everything what all about, the time. What about all the squid guys that just like ate it? You know, in the, the next episode, yeah, nobody forget. nobody outraging about that. No, let's get mad no, at Baby Yoda. No the team mo- squid, the best thing of 2020. Let's just get mad at him. Yeah. <laughs> that may be the best thing of 2020. You know what I'm saying? Be, you yeah. might be right. Speaking of good things of 2020, did you see Moderna, the pharma company? They came out with their tests of their vaccine. Did you see this? Uh-uh. Competitor so the, to Pfizer? Yes. So this is what I love about what's happening right now is you have different pharmaceutical companies. 92% accurate. 94.5% oh, accurate. Oh, I was just kidding. So for real. Yeah. Uh, now, here's the thing. I'm a little bit like, okay, how are they How are they tweaking these studies to make it look like it's more or less than the other guy? Like, what's the deal? Mm-hmm. But yeah, they came out. Theirs was 94.5% uh, wow. effective. So now we have two vaccines in trials. Uh, from different companies who are competing to see which one is going to be. We just went up above Russia. <laughs> Take true. that. That's true. Oh, they were 92. <laughs> they had 92, yeah. and then now he's got 94. So, you know what's going to happen? I feel like some pharma company is going to come out with a vaccine just to compete, and they're going to be like, yeah. ours is 94% accurate. Yeah. But side effects include erections and larger breasts. So just be careful. Wow. You know, some, well, some way to make Did them, you yeah. see the the other the extreme people that were saying the tweets about that, that you're all are excited about a, a, a vaccine that's 90, 92% accurate, but then only has 
a ninety is a a point zero one percent chance of getting you in the first place. Mm. So I thought that was kind of interesting. I mean, I know that's going to fucking rattle half the people out there, but yeah. I thought that was funny. Well, did you read about the side effects yeah. that people were reporting from the vaccine? No, is there? <laughs> yeah, so apparently you, you feel like shit. So people are, and this was for the Pfizer one, I think it was. That when they gave them the vaccine, they have uh, they, they feel like they're sick for a couple of days, so like mild, maybe mild fever, headache. Well, that's no, that's like the flu yeah. shot was is like that. Is it? Yeah, yeah. it does happen like that. Really? Yeah, that's why, a lot of people that's why I'm not a fan of it. I took yeah. it one time, and then after that, I never took it again. What that's, happened? Three well, sometimes days. Sometimes there's active culture, right? That well, they use. I don't know. <clears throat> I, that, I think that's how they do it, right? I mean, they basically it's are supposed to be dead virus. I, yeah, it's supposed to be dead, but it's not always. The, the case. next three days, I had like a nasty flu. So that and that was what kept me from doing it again. It was like the, everyone's oh, you gotta get the flu shot, gotta get the flu shot. And this was like a decade ago. Get the flu shot. The next three days, I have the flu and it's nasty. And I'm like, well, I'd rather roll the dice and fucking see if I get it or not get it. Huh. Then. Yeah. Oh, mm -hmm. interesting. I, and that's not that uncommon either. I'm not the only person that. Now I know that there's a reaction sometimes because it's an immune reaction, but I didn't know that you would feel that bad. From oh it. yeah. I've only had a flu shot once, and I was I didn't one, notice anything. That one time I had it. That's the only reason why I haven't did it again because the one time I did it, I had flu like symptoms mm -hmm. for the next three days and then well, what mm -hmm. the fuck the how many times it? have you guys gotten the flu in your lives like the actual once. flu me too yeah I've only had it once. It. How about uh, you? Probably a few times. You sure? Yeah. You sure it's not a cold? Mm, that you I'm think pretty it's a sure. Flu? Yeah. No. <laughs> I mean, I'm puking in your guts up. I don't think you're. That's the. That's a cold. You know. Uh, you normally get that from. That a might be a different virus, like the stomach mm, one. Or no. Stomach no. Flu. Uh, yeah. Maybe. I mean, I don't. Yeah. I mean, I don't have anything to prove that. They're either. also saying that it, that because coronavirus has also caused the common cold. So COVID nineteen is the one that is the bad one right now, right? But there's yeah. lots of coronaviruses that have been around. And they're saying that some cold strains that cause the common cold can can give you partial immunity against COVID nineteen. So if you've gotten certain colds in the past, that you may have partial protection of of COVID nineteen, which is good news now because everybody gets the cold. Okay, this is a little controversial, but have they actually? And I know the WHO had talked about like going back and investigating the origin and everything because it's still unclear like mm. they, there's different stories i just get a little irritated that people are like referring to it as science that you know it was like in the wet markets but they haven't even concluded that yet no no that's the that's the overwhelm i mean most uh theories say that that's where it came from right but then there's the contra you know the conspiracies that it was escaped the lab and that whole deal sure but they didn't prove that so that's conspiracy too yeah i don't know man we'll see <laughs> uh, justin i want to ask you are we good with the PRX shipment, or is it going to the wrong place still? <laughs> yeah, yeah, gotta, yeah, speaking of conspiracy yeah, theories. Yeah, we got a call. <laughs> That's so total conspiracy. We're getting a bunch of PRX equipment, and I, and I guess they were sending it to the I, house in, in Truckee. <laughs> I freaked uh, out. Yeah. I got a message from Choki, and she goes like, hey, I, and she, you can tell she's all excited. Like, just want to let you know, you know, confirming PRX's order, this and that. Do we need, and she says, do we need to make sure that there's anybody at the Truckee house to receive it? And I was like, what? Yeah. I mean, and that's I, a big pallet of equipment. Well, yeah, and it's like snowing up there right now. Yeah, so I was there on the last, okay, so last time, which was hilarious, right? So the last time we got the shipment of PRX, I was at the uh, Truckee house, and it came in. And I had to be there, right, to make sure. And the trucker backs in, and he's like, uh, do you have a forklift? And I'm like, no. <laughs> You're like at a residential house. Like, no, I don't have a forklift. He's like... Oh, I don't know what to tell you then. Like, I don't know how we're gonna get this this uh, this pallet off. And I'm like, wait a second, you drove this all the way here, and we don't have a way. And he's got like one of those little handheld like forklifts, mm -hmm. and then he's got one of those, you know, on with scissors sure, lifts or whatever. Which does plenty. Yeah, which you know, after me telling explaining to him that I don't have any of these tools, yeah. and he was you know, like, you know, yeah, uh, you're gonna actually have to do it. Scolding somebody. me, yeah, exactly. He yeah. had to do, it. and that's what it was. It was like he literally just wanted to back in and then have me do it. Like he didn't want to have to do anything. And I'm like, yeah. well, unfortunately, man, I'm gonna need a little bit of your help yeah. here to get this thing down. And then they just drop it right there in the driveway and then you know Eli and I had to cut it all up and then take it into the in the garage one piece by piece and it was a whole ordeal so when I get that message yeah because it was it's supposed, it's supposed to come here yeah it's yeah. supposed to come here and we have snow all this week coming to Truckee and all I could think about was oh my god imagine them just dropping the pallet in the middle of our driveway with you know feet of snow around this thing <laughs> it would be right. fun. So. But yeah, so we call. I mean, I called and, and they reversed. They caught them like as they're driving out, with, thankfully. So yeah, it'll be here. But yeah, somewhere on the order, they just because we had ordered it up to go there. The last yeah. one, they used the same address. Now, they are we going to have to pay more shipping because they drove halfway there and come over here? Uh, no, it'll just take it take like two uh, extra days. What are we getting? So we're getting. Uh, let's see. We got two two of the uh, squat racks that fold out. 
Uh, we have like full um, vertical racks for for the the plates, mm. and then um, let's see what else we got. Like a bunch of accessories for all the the squat racks. Um, bas- basically, going to deck the whole thing out uh, with uh, new benches and all kinds of stuff. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. And it's, then it's you guys gonna, will work out. Yeah. yeah. Well, we're getting rid of this old piece of crap. You know, we we, we started out like under like lower means. Like I found another company. I'm not going to put them on blast, but I don't really. Like like the squat rack. We're getting out of here. Really? Yeah. yeah. We're, we're going to start all over. It's going to be a fresh look. It's going to be awesome. What the, are we going to do with it? We're going to sell it or give it away? I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. maybe. We'll, we'll see. We'll I mean, right now, I mean, I mean fitness for equipment gr- still like super uh, Jerry sent, hard to get. Jerry sold the the dumbbell rack like Did she? in 24 hours. Yeah. Right? People yeah, are I looking. Think people will get it. It looks like gyms are going to be closing down again. It looks like it. Do you think so? Yep. Yep, oh yep, yep. God. So b- because the cases are, I mean, they're exploding. Remember the last peak when everybody was freaked out? Yeah. It's worse already than it was uh, with that last peak. You and know what? I, I saw some memes around this. and <laughs> it's, it's, uh, yeah. it's a me- Here comes meme. some science. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I saw some, well, I know. This is funny. It's like I saw some memes around this, and I, and it, it, I saw it in, you know, driving with Katrina, and I, brought, I posed the same question to her. I'm like, I don't understand the logic behind – the uh, indoor outdoor situation, and it's this is where this is where when we when we have laws that come out that are just stupid, that don't even make sense. It's like gyms cannot operate, you know, no one can operate inside, but they will allow you to have these tents outside. You, it can only be outdoors if it's indoors outdoors. Yes, <laughs> that's why it is. I'm like, okay, so <laughs> the, this cl- enclosed indoor, outdoor. outdoor tent is better than a brick building as far as spreading the virus. No, there's no logic behind no, that. It's man. just because they that's the, what they set the rules up. So people have now made these outdoor tents, and everybody's sitting in these outdoor well, tents. It's like, you may as well be open. Dude, I don't know what they're going to do because if they start passing widespread lockdowns, people are uh, they're pretty much over it. The whole reason why it's spiking mm. to begin with is people have stopped uh, isolating. They've well, started ho- visiting with each other. Yeah. And and so I don't know Hopefully how they're the gonna- government gyms will close down too this time. Yeah, I heard that they stayed Whoops. open last time, didn't yeah. they? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Whoopsies. <laughs> yeah. I mean, what, what are they going to do? Because I think people, people are going to be like, they're not going to want to do it. You know, they got to have a different... I don't know. It's going to be crazy, but I feel really bad for the fitness space because they got crushed last time and the few that remained, they shut them down again. They're they're going to be totally screwed. Yeah. You know, so I guess black market gyms are going to be a I think thing. I, I think that's what you're going to have is like, uh, what do you call you it? Speak Bitcoin. E- a speakeasy. Yeah, Bitcoin pay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know. Or take cash and then not claim it. Yeah, that's what I fear. I fear. Uh, it's like when, if you make things so crazy, you turn a bunch of law-abiding citizens into... <laughs> Lawbreakers, and then L laws become something you don't follow. We saw this during the the uh, prohibition. Yeah, a lot of good people because they didn't want to follow that law. Now you're already breaking the law. It's like when you go off your diet. Like you go off your diet, then you go off the whole diet. Right. So people are like I'm already breaking the law. I might as well <laughs> all the way break it. It's studies will show that oh, they no. actually show that. So that's it's, interesting. Yeah. So I hope they. I don't know. Now are we seeing this? Everything. Are we seeing this across the country right now, or is this just Cali- the California? The whole country is seeing. Pretty much every state is seeing an explosion. Uh, of cases mm. right now. So, mm-hmm. and I know Biden said that he would uh, support a nationwide lockdown. Um, uh, so, and that's would, good for the economy. It would, no, it's not. Oh. Well, there's a lot of side effects. I Man, I feel bad for my my kids. I, I keep looking at my kids, and I'm, I can tell that they're physically depressed. I can tell that their bodies are depressed because they're stuck on their computers all day long, and then I got to force them to go outside and move, and I can see them lift up a little bit. I'm like, now, oh are, my you, gosh. are you guys both still, are you guys, I mean, how how strict are you guys about them wearing their glasses, their blue blockers? Very strict. Mm-hmm. I was going to ask. That, I am now. I, I, yeah. You guys both have mentioned that you guys do that. I'm not around you all the time. Are you guys like, I would think that you're, well, it's great now. It's been it's been such a ritual that I don't have to tell them. They just kind of do that when they go open their computers, and it's just part. So it's of not the, like twisting their arm to get it to do. No, it. it's no. just it's right next to their computer, and then they sign in to Zoom, and and they have yours, at yours it. too. So. Yeah, but, I mean they're on them all day, so you know you the blue light. If you expose that much, has been shown to cause things like headaches and you know tension headaches or maybe even damage to your eyes. And then, of course, if they're on all day and then at night and they're not getting sunlight. Yeah, but you know how kids are, right? So is this something that either one of you guys have noticed, like they, the kids actually like it and notice a difference? Or is this like mom and oh, dad, tell good, me to? Good question. Half mm. the time. Half yeah. the time they'll notice and do it, and the other half the time I have to remind them. Okay. Yeah, that's what, that's what I'm curious about because I feel like kids are like, 
you know, so resilient. They're like, I'm fine. I don't want to wear these stupid glasses. But are they noticing a difference when they do or they yeah, don't? Yeah, I don't know if they do, but I definitely notice their behavior uh, is different as a result of it. So, yeah. You know, yeah. what's funny with kids is they don't necessarily have uh, context or, or yeah. things to compare. So for them, this feels like this is how I always feel. Right. I know. So, I'm I'm convinced that's that was how we dieted when we were kids. Right. Yeah. Like, uh, you, yeah. like like red velvet cake always messed yeah, up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it probably, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Well, I just dude, thought, we, like, we, we called the tood in our in our house. Like, what? If, if they got the tood, the, the attitude? attitude. Yes. The, you know, and you know right away. Like I'm like, what? Where'd this come from? Oh, dude. And you start like retracing it, and you realize it's things like that. It's like a sugar, you know, bomb they just had, or it's like I you know, being that. on the screen. I believe for too sugar long. has to be. Like one of the number, the number like one of the number one the things that I know equal. parents uh, uh, you know agree is that when when your kid has a bunch of candy later, I mean it's a joke in a lot of families, right? Like oh they go over to grandma and grandpa's and they just the grandparents intentionally feed them and then they give them back to the parents and then they're wired all night long. Electronics, the same thing. Yeah, when they're on all day, like my son, he's just he's already a teenager and teenagers tend to be a little gloomy anyway. You know they kind of do, everything sucks kind of attitude. Yeah, which is normal. That's normal for teenagers. It's just it is what it is. But when he's on all day, then I have him come downstairs and I have to kind of force them because otherwise he'll go straight to YouTube or straight to whatever and just stay on all day long. So I'll tell everybody, come down. We're going to take a break. We're going to hang out. And then we'll hang out. And the first 10 minutes, he's basically negative. Like we'll, we'll be talking about something, you know, and he'll be like, that's not true. This is what happened. And then, or he'll like tease his sister, but in a little bit of a mean way or whatever. So I'm just like biting my lip. I'm like, kid, you better... <laughs> <laughs> you better lighten up, dude, because you're about to go back to the 1800s with your uh, electronics. Uh, I'm going to give you a candle. Yeah, it's funny. <laughs> yeah, a little sundial. <laughs> you know? So, yeah, yesterday I was like, you could just leave, you know, stop hanging out with us. And then he, he kind of got the picture. He's like, well, I don't want to leave. I'm like, all right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we're, we're trying to institute, like, family game nights, like, once a week at least. Start with that, then maybe a few more times. But, like, just something to get them off of, like, wanting to be on there. Yeah, give me some ideas. So we do, we play Uno. We yeah. play Rummy Cube. We don't play Monopoly anymore because Blockus is a, is a fun one. Okay, Blockus. That's a great yep. one. Monopoly start fights. That always starts. Monopoly is a bad one. Yeah. yeah, that does. Is uh, it really? Oh yeah, dude, dude. People get really upset. Yeah, yeah. Why? Well, you land on because their property. You lose all your money, fucked. and the other guy's <laughs> laughing. <laughs> you know, I'm just like, I can't like you know show them. That's funny. That they can just win easy. Yeah, oh, yeah that's yeah. Really you know, funny. I'll take your money. Yeah, yeah. No, we play Uno a lot, and we play with the altered rules. You know, where you could stack the cards. Hey, so, how about the or book? Sorry, how about the book I sent over to you? You already had it. I thought that was really interesting. Oh, the, the, the Tuttle Twins. Yeah. Yeah. So that's uh, that's good stuff. It teaches about like, yeah, my sis- markets. And- my sister actually was asking about things to like, and obviously Max is a little early for that stuff. Yeah, when um, he's probably seven. Right. Or, yeah. She was asking the types of books that uh, you know I, I want for him or if I want like learning type stuff for him for, uh, for Christmas. I'm like, absolutely. Uh, please, no, no more toys. Um, <clears throat> and so she was talking about that she brought them up and I looked at it and I was like, oh, this is really interesting. I was like, you know, I'm going to send this to Sal. I'm sure Sal would love this for his kids. And then you're like, oh yeah, we already own them. Yeah. They look really cool though. Yeah, they are. They're great. Um, are you, are you doing uh, like traditional school or are you guys going to do homeschool? Have you guys talked about this at all? Uh, no, we're not going to homeschool. Katrina's okay. not, yeah, no, Katrina's not going to homeschool, but there's a lot, you know, the Bay Area is really cool. There's a lot of like little, uh, private, like pre-kindergarten type of stuff that we can this put is a them pretty in. good choice. Uh, like variety of choices yeah the other thing is uh coaching the nanny we coach the nanny a lot right so right and that's the idea of like having somebody who's with us for a long time is that when there's certain things that we want to teach him uh that we can you know teach her to teach him on a obviously we do it too but for her to reinforce it since she's playing with him all day long so we'll see how long that lasts and like how how well that accelerates his learning. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm hoping that because we have a lot of the, the books and tools and, and, and toys that are made for learning that if you're just really consistent with doing that, I think that it'll start to advance him. And if I think that he's moving along nicely, we may just stick with her teaching him a lot of stuff. If I feel like he's not progressing the way I am, I may start researching like what little pre-K type mm-hmm. schools that we can put him in. But I like him. I like us kind of controlling that environment. Well, as if you're, much as possible. our kids are not super. I mean, obviously they're only a year apart or whatever. Um, we're probably going to homeschool with the Raelius. And that's exciting. So you could do it together. Yeah, no, that's exciting for me because, uh, yeah, I mean, I would love that. I would love because obviously I know the type of stuff that you would be teaching him and stuff. Um, well, see, I talked to my so my cousins are all planning on having kids soon, and and so I talked to them about it. And they're like, well, what about you know socialization? You know, the typical thing you hear. Yeah. And I'm like, we're not going to do all the teaching. We're we're going to facilitate. Yeah. So 
what we're looking at is signing him up for different courses and classes so he'll learn from different people and kind of follow him a little bit, see what he's interested in. So, for example, uh, a good strategy would be, let's just say he was super into airplanes, right? Yeah. Like that's his favorite thing in the world. Well, now we're going to teach him math through airplanes. We're right. going to teach him science through airplanes. We're going to teach him you know, writing and history through airplanes. So you right. kind of follow the kid because when they're interested, they just learn so much more. And then we'll find courses and, and yeah, teachers and stuff like know, that. You know, your uh, your relatives bring up something that has been on my mind a lot. And I you know, I go back and forth on, on what I think about this, right? So... Um, you know, my biggest concern of having him having him home with a nanny and not being in a daycare, because one of the best things about a daycare is that you you force that socialization. Yeah, right? yeah. They're forced to play together and do those things. Um, now, Katrina and I, Katrina makes a conscious effort to make sure that she gets it every week he's he's being brought over to like one of her friend's houses that have kids that are like close in his age or a couple years older mm-hmm. so he can kind of get uh, play with them. And then the other thing is that her and I, personality wise, are both like very out. We're both outgoing uh, people, and so he doesn't have any signs. Like I look at my other friends' kids at that uh, you know are kind of like shy. And like one of my my buddies' kids, she's really shy and she just sits there all by herself and kind of and plays. Like Max is not like that. Mm-hmm. Like he's around and he's socializing with other people and playing with people he's not introverted and i can see that already so sometimes i wonder if that's just like our own fear of like oh if you don't have him in a daycare where there's 10 kids that are mm-hmm. wrestling and fighting toys with him he's not going to learn how to play and socialize I, maybe that's true for somebody who has a kid who already is going to be introverted and then you, if you take them out of that setting that's probably damning for them. Yeah, see I have friends that were really big in the homeschool world and uh, I used to think a lot of those things and they said no, they said there's so many groups and so many things that they can do. So they do it's not like they're not going to classes. They're just they're just facilitated. What I mean by facilitated, you pick each one. Right. Mm-hmm. So on Wednesday my kid goes to an art, you know, course where there's another 15 kids and on Friday they do this gymnastic outdoor you know, class that is three hours long, and then there's another ten kids over there. Well, that's obvious at that age, though. I'm I'm curious what you think about like because where I'm at right now, like daycare age. Yeah, daycare age. Mm. This is where I. This is before that. This is obviously like we've already. I mean, we already took him to his first swim lesson, and we plan yeah, yeah. to like integrate all those things too. But that's kind of like two, three, four on. Yeah, I hear you saying. Right that. now, it's the daycare age where he'd normally be playing with other kids and other, and and that's where you know a lot of people will fear that they won't get socialized enough. So, um, I, I I mean, I was that person. I felt that way. I was constantly like stressing about that with Katrina. We have to make sure he's around kids. We have to make sure he's around. I don't mm-hmm. want. I, I I'd be so crazy if I have this introverted kid who doesn't want to talk to anybody or yeah, play with. Put anybody. him in his room and throw books at him like Ben yeah, Greenfield. Right, right. That's what I do. <laughs> like I'm so afraid of that. Right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but the more and more I see him develop, though, um, you know, the more and more we're now starting at that age of seeing him little bits of mine and Katrina's personality start to develop in him. And I just feel like, you know what, I'm starting to get more relaxed about that where I was the one stressed about that. But I go, you know what, if he's got her in, in him and mm-hmm. he's got me in him, like the likelihood of this kid being a little you know, lock himself in the in the room by himself is it like that's a one in a million. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you yeah. shot. With I don't it. think he'll be like that. Yeah, so I, I feel pretty good about that. First question is from Frank D. Morano. How does exercise tempo affect the aesthetics of resistance training? Tempo. We, we have to decode yeah, this first. I feel too. like this was a debate that we had trying to interpret this question. So the way I interpret it is he's saying, okay, how does the the tempo of your lifting change how the exercise affects your body? In other words. How does it build muscle if you go slower versus faster mm. or pause or whatever? What's the difference between the two, the different tempos? Justin like, thinks the aesthetics of the movement. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. I don't know. That's the way I read it anyways. Like he just of used, you do. Yeah. Aesthetic <laughs> as being like um, the way that the uh, the actual like performance looks and the technique oh, and all that kind of stuff. Interesting. Okay. So I'll start with mine and okay. then you can answer that. So as far as the aesthetics of the body is concerned, now if you look at studies- Studies will compare different uh, tempos and in, in determine which one builds the most muscle. It's very similar to what you see with these rep range uh, studies. And in these short studies, which are typically anywhere between 12 weeks, usually 6 weeks, 12 weeks, or maybe 16 weeks, they'll determine that a particular tempo builds more muscle than other tempos. And usually that tempo is a relatively controlled negative with a 
controlled yet explosive uh, positive. Uh, so essentially good form tempo uh, would be the one that would build uh, the most muscle in these studies. But here's the problem with this is that these studies only last 12 to 16 weeks and your body adapts to tempo just like it does to rep ranges. So if you always train in this kind of controlled uh, tempo, then some explosive repetitions or some slower repetitions will probably get your body to start changing again. Now, from a performance standpoint, tempo, I think, is a little bit more important in terms of what you want to stick to. If you're an athlete, um, depending on the sport, you probably want to be more explosive mm -hmm. with your repetitions. But if we're talking about just developing the body, I think it's important to work with different types of tempo and break it up. You know, I, I like to do every month or so, I'll slow the reps down or I'll focus on a portion of a rep where I'll pause at the bottom or pause at the top of a rep. Um, and then maybe the next four weeks, I'm going to go heavier and be a little bit more explosive uh, with my movements or even go lighter and be more explosive to where the bar moves you know, faster. All tempos, most tempos, I should say, build muscle. Mm -hmm. there's, all, there's a little risk with the faster tempos, so I tend to tell people to stay away from those unless they're really, really good with their technique and form. But other than that, they all build muscle. The one that you're used to is the one that's going to work least for you. So, uh, you know, work within all of them. Yeah, I think that's a more interesting <laughs> interpretation of this this question. I think the other one, you know, I was thinking of, it's it's the, the way that I read it being tempo, being important, going slow, for instance, learning techniques. I think that uh, it, it provides more opportunity to, um, you know, sort of navigate uh, and figure out how your body sways one way or the other based off of like the imbalances that you need to determine. Uh, so tempo being uh, a factor in the very beginning, I'm always like very much geared in the very slow tempo, uh, being able to be controlled, being able to stabilize. And then we start sort of messing with that tempo and building up the speed of it. Uh, once I feel like the, the technique uh, is, is polished and it's mastered, and then we can start really applying uh, some, some more uh, speed to those reps to get those types of benefits that you mentioned in terms of stimulating the muscle in a different way. Well, so I, I took this similar to, I think, Sal, um, as far as like what this person was asking, although I think Justin makes good points for what he's talking about. Um, it's, it's, so, it's just like exer changing up exercise, uh, rest periods. These, this is the same, the same conversation that we have with that, and it's to Sal's point of the sticking to a range, sticking to a tempo for four to six weeks. If you've been doing that tempo for X amount of time, the best thing you can do to build muscle or have an aesthetic physique is to change that up, is to do a different tempo. Now, that all being said, almost always when I got a client, and this kind of goes to Justin's point, I would always slow down the tempo. It's very rare, and I've said this on this show before, the next time you go in a gym, and look around at everybody bench pressing, squat, doing all the movements, and just see if you see a four-two-two tempo. You just don't see no, it. You never see it. You never see it. You never see somebody take four full seconds uh, on the descend or on the negative, a two-second pause at the bottom, and then two seconds on on the pause. You just count it, count it, and show me somebody. And that is technically to the studies that. Sal is alluding to, that's technically the best tempo for building muscle. So if that's the best t tempo for building muscle and hardly anybody does it, uh, I, I think it's one of the first places I go to teach. So I love to, to slow everybody down to a 4-2-2 tempo to start them off. And I, my, most clients get great results from it just because they've never slowed their tempo down that. And then it plays into Justin's point that he's making. It also is easier for you to make the adjustments to their, their mechanics and to address things that are going on in their body. So it's even better for, for getting good form and technique. So that's my go-to tempo to start. And if, it, if anything, I'll, I'll, I'll lean even slower. So I might even pause longer at the bottom. I might even take the descend or the negative longer than four seconds. It might be five seconds. You just don't ever see that anymore. You don't see anybody really train or any ever, right? You never see anybody training this way. And there's so much value, uh, both to both points these guys are making. The point of Justin's of really working and honing in on the technique and form. To Sal's point, most people don't train in that tempo. So just by training in that tempo, you're going to see change in the body. Next question is from Paula Angela. 
Smith machines versus free barbell weights. Oh, easy Smith machines. Yeah. <laughs> so the <laughs> all day they're they're completely different. Just because a barbell is present in a Smith machine does not make it a barbell, uh, you know, machine or barbell exercises. Totally, totally different. A Smith machine has a barbell fixed on a track. Um, so every single exercise you do on a Smith machine is different, very different from what you would do with the with free weights, uh, with free barbell weights. Mm -hmm. um, Smith machines are versatile as far as machines are concerned. You know, most machines you do one exercise on them. I'd say the only thing that's more versatile than a Smith machine are cables. Uh, cables are extremely versatile, but with Smith machines, there's a lot of different variations of exercises. But I I typically never really use them uh, with clients at all. I'd say that the few exercises that I would do with this mach mach Smith machine would be like a stationary lunge maybe to, to, to give someone a little bit more stability to teach them. Mm. Uh, but even then I'd prefer to do it free and have them hold on to something for balance. You could do like, you know, presses on it. Uh, and then it's more like a machine press. Um, I which, love body weight rows. Yeah. Uh, you're just using that. it like but a, it. like a rack. <laughs> yeah. That's, yeah. that's it though. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't, there's not a, a tremendous amount of value. I mean, if, if I were to buy, if I were to equip a gym, let's say a home gym. Right. A Smith machine is not cheap. I wouldn't put a Smith machine in there. Um, I, I put cables in there first. Well, I think the appeal is the, the safety uh, in terms of it being in a track. It, like, it eliminates a lot of other variables where, uh, you know, with the barbell, it could travel left to right. You could twist, you could rotate. Uh, lots of different uh, things that your body has to uh, accommodate for. Um, but in terms of it being as effective, it's just not even in the I, same ballpark. I don't know if I agree that it, it, the appeal is that it's safer because the people I, I see, at very advanced people use it a lot, mm. and I think it's easier. That's the appeal. Sure. Well, it's, wasn't that the initial intent of building it was yeah. to keep people like confined, so it was a yeah. little less? So I saw a movement the other day, somebody doing it, and I, I've used it for this before, and I forgot, I like this. This is kind of cool. Um single leg deadlift on it right because the bar is sure you're right? ba it's balancing for right so if mm. i'm really trying like let's say i have a, a discrepancy in a uh, right to left of my my client lower half and they uh they do a really good job like their their glute just isn't firing as well they're not hinging as well on the left side as they are the right side and so i want to use single single leg type exercises and i know single leg dumbbells or single leg uh, barbell presents a, a major challenge just of stability so if I'm really just trying to get them to fire that glute, uh, you know, consistently, having something like a, a Smith machine bar makes it very stable and easy. And so all I'm concentrating on is the hinging. So there's places. I also love using it for like a upper body, like incline press or shoulder press, and I'm doing strip sets and I'm by myself. So I, there's places of value for this. Now, to Sal's point, if I am on a budget and I'm building a gym, I'm not wasting my money here. The thousands of dollars you spend on a Smith machine, there's so many other cool tools that I would I would put in my garage gym. I would never waste my money on a Smith machine because I've gone years without ever using one. Mm -hmm. But if I'm in a gym and they've got one, sure, you find me playing around. But I also do that with lots of machines that I would never buy and put in my garage. So if you have access to it, I think there's... There's some places of value for it as much as I know we shit on it a lot. Um, so there's places of value to it and you can use it. It's just, it doesn't even come close to comparing to a barbell. There's so many more benefits to barbell training uh, than there is to on a Smith machine. I mean, you get all the same benefits and a bunch more, right? So where the Smith machine is not that way. There's a lot of benefits you don't get with the Smith machine that you get with barbells. So it's a, it's an obvious win for the for the barbells. But I know on this podcast we we take a shit on the Smith machine a lot, and I don't want. I, I, there's there you can use it, and if it's in a gym, I, I don't think it's like blasphemy to use it. I think that the, you can use it for certain things. It's just it's not. It's just not as valuable as a barbell. Next question is from Coolio Colin One. While bulking on a three time per week workout routine, should we eat in a surplus on off days as well? You know what'll simplify this for a lot of people is uh in in generally speaking, look at your calories from a weekly basis. Now you can't get too extreme with this. It only, what I mean by that is if you're uh you know, four days out of the week, you're in a deficit, now you gotta make up for it the last three days, that could make things a little bit mm. unhealthy. But look at it from a weekly perspective. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, you want to be in a surplus by the end of the week. So if you're at a at maintenance or at a deficit, 
three days a week, could you end up at a surplus for the week if the other four days you eat, uh, you know, and a decent surplus? You totally could. This is how I tend to eat, and mainly because this uh, mimics real life more um, than eating the same thing every single day. Now, from an organizational standpoint, especially if you're tracking macros and calories, and you're somebody who's, you know, very planned out and you have specific goals, it's probably easier to just eat, you know, in a surplus, a small surplus every single day. It's probably going to be easier for you that way. Only problem with that is then transitioning from that to real life. Uh, real life, the way we eat is not the same every single day. And, and some days you're going to eat a little less and some days you're going to eat a little bit more. But ultimately, at the end of the day, if you want to build muscle and you want to gain weight, you're trying to bulk, you have to end at a surplus uh, for the week. It, it doesn't work if you don't do that. It depends on the person I'm talking to. So if I have a client who really struggles to put weight on and 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 the bulk is is more difficult, then we are probably talking about trying trying to be in a surplus every day. And the reason why that is because it's hard for them to be in a surplus every day. And I know it's inevitable we'll probably miss some days. And so I'm probably pushing the client who struggles to bulk, struggles to put weight on. So the, the like, like the hard gainer, right? The skinny kid, right? He, that the kid that I was, right? I'm pushing that kid to probably eat in a surplus uh, every single day, knowing that some days we might miss uh, to Sal's point, because I know at the end of the week, I need to definitely add up. Flip that with somebody else, somebody who let's say puts on body fat really quick, um, and that person, I would prefer to go th what Sal is saying, where I have, you know, three days, like the training days, I like to have those really heavy and hard, uh, calorie days, just because they're moving and they're, they're exercising or hopefully most of those calories and get partitioned over to building muscle. And then I'll have lower days on the days when they're not exercising just because it's easier that way. They don't need as much fuel and energy because they're not working out. And again, it's it mimics more like real life of the up and down. So, and I do think you can you can be in a weekly or monthly bulk, but still have low calorie days. I think people don't understand that. It's it, it's okay to do that. You don't just, and this was a fear I had as a young kid thinking like, oh my God, I had a day or two of low calories. Muscle just fell off my body. It doesn't work that way whatsoever. And in fact, it's probably healthy for us to have a day or two where you're under calories, even though you're in a bulk, a day or two in the week where you're under calories, but then you're in an even bigger surplus on the other day. So mm. I prefer that for health, for the uh, a person to put a lean bulk, you know, that doesn't have a hard time with uh, adding calories. But if I'm talking to the hard gainer or the skinny kid, I'm probably trying to get him to eat as much as I can every single day. Next question is from R. Redeon. With Mind Pump being a treasure trove of instructional videos, free resources, workout programs, and advice, how would you help a beginner with a list of imbalances, mobility issues, improper movements, etc., dive into something like correctional exercise and mobility without being overwhelmed? There's Maps Prime, Prime Pro, and hundreds of videos posted on Mind Pump TV alone. Where would you get them to start? Okay, so the free stuff is out there because we want to give people as much free resources as possible. But it can definitely get a little overwhelming. Um, and, you know, this might happen, right? It might happen where you're like, well, where do I start? And this is why mm. we sell programs where we actually organize everything uh, for you. So mm -hmm. Probably the easiest place to start, um, one of the easiest places is Maps Prime. Maps Prime has a compass test in there. Take the test, and then the, the results of that test, there's three movements. That's it. There's three movements that you do. You, 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 you do them like the program tells you, and then based upon how you move and feel in those movements, that'll direct you to what exercises you can do. Now, if you don't want to buy a program just yet, and you want to kind of start off and maybe follow a class and kind of see what it feels like, um, we have a Maps Prime webinar um, that's free. It's mapsprimewebinar.com. And Justin actually takes in the in the webinar, Doug. Uh, he takes Doug through some of the tests that you find in Maps Prime, and that'll help you out. But the Maps Prime program will direct you because here's the thing with correctional uh, exercise and mobility: it's very individualized. Mm -hmm. You know what may help you become more mobile and improve your movement patterns may not be the right thing for the next guy. This has been a passion of ours because it ha it is overwhelming. It is a lot of information, uh, especially if you're looking and searching all these things online. You can go down multiple rabbit holes of, uh, you know, ways that people uh, 
tend to attack a lot of these different issues and, and try to get you the right kind of information there. And oh, by the way, I love that you resurrected the word treasure trove. I have to point that out. Yeah, we've, uh, yeah, we've, we've brought That's that a back. throwback, yeah, right? Yeah, a little throwback there. Mm. So I appreciate that. But uh, this has been a passion of ours because like this is this is everything. This is this is literally the beginning of the of of your success that you build upon. And so we we wanted to really make sure there was a way that we could all collectively figure out how to make this easier. And to kind of create something that was like a flow chart, which uh, Sal was describing, we we tried to make it so we have three exercises that can you can see a lot in these exercises, but it's 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 up to the individual to really go through that and and put the work in in terms of feeling their body and paying attention and maybe having somebody video them so they can also see uh, what's happening and why certain uh, joints weren't able to move the way they were and pull things back properly and be able to get these contact points. And, uh, you know, your, your, your body is very subtle about how it compensates a lot of times and people just don't see it or feel it. And so the first step is really to, uh, uh, you know, you know, peer into that. Re- really, really zoom in to to your body and, and understand uh, when I when I squat down. You know, my body's tendency is to want to kind of round forward or to arch back or you know, all these little nuanced things are very important in the very beginning. So I highly suggest uh, you do either or of what uh, Sal was talking about in terms of like going through the prime is as simple as we got, uh, and then the prime uh, webinar something free that will I- introduce you. To it. Yeah, I, I would just I'm selling you the bundle, right? I'm selling you the the, the prime bundle for sure. I think you need both. Uh, I think this is a great question. Uh, I think Justin's right. This is something we're extremely passionate about. Sal's right that you know it is a lot of information. And if you're not sure and you want something laid out for you, that was the purpose of building these things. And then the 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 webinars that they're talking to, talking about right now, which are absolutely free for you, is to give you an example of like test driving that. Even though it's still not specific exactly to you, it gives you an idea of what to expect if you were to purchase those programs. Plus, both those webinars have a discount code at the end, so you could save some money. So if you're not sure, if you're not going to invest in the bundle right away, then my advice is to go through those both those free webinars. And take them, go through them, and then there's there's coupon codes mm. afterwards if you want to save money and then get the program. Later. Yeah. Now I named one of them, which is MapsPrimeWebinar.com. The other one is PrimeProWebinar.com. They're both different. One is for Maps Prime. The other one's for Maps Prime Pro, and they're both uh, totally free. So you can go sign up at any time. Look, Mind Pump is recorded on video as well as audio, so you can check us out on YouTube, Mind Pump Podcast. You can find all of us on social media as well, uh, both Instagram and now also on uh, Parler. Uh, You can find us on both platforms. You can find Justin at Mind Pump Justin, me at Mind Pump Sal, Adam at Mind Pump Adam, and Doug at Mind Pump Doug. ...equivalent calories. What they find is that the group that does the diet break burns more body fat and preserves more muscle. Now, I don't know any studies that have been done on bulking, but I can speak from personal experience. In my experience, and this is for me and for clients, when I would include bulking breaks, I would gain more lean body mass and less body fat. Mm. 